Want a break from the app? All right, what else did I have to do today? Ah, yes, overdose in my apartment. I better get home. <laughs> Etika. I never met him, never spoken to him once. This is more so a show of respect. Rest in peace, man. On February 14th, 2024, so not too long ago, YouTuber and streamer Too Mad was found dead in his room in Los Angeles. If you didn't know him through his YouTube name, then you probably have briefly heard of him through his gaming content or the famous Goodnight Girl meme that he helped made. I know we couldn't Skype tonight, but that's alright. Good night, girl. I'll see you tomorrow. His real name was Modeya Siddiq, and after missing several appointments and mysteriously cutting contact away from the people in his close life, concerns were starting to be raised since no one really knew what had happened to him or where he was. The tragic discovery of his lifeless body would be found when LAPD were sent to his home for a standard welfare check. And while LAPD would not flat out tell the public what caused his death, they did speculate that a possible drug overdose was the reason since when they got there, they did discover a bunch of drugs all over his room. So the possibility of foul play, or in other words, murder, was out of the question. Too Mad was just 23 years old when he passed away. See, while police weren't able to give an exact date on his death, since when they got there it was already too late, many online users noted that Too Mad's status on his Discord had remained unchanged for nearly a week leading up to this discovery. There were other rumors suggesting that Too Mad might have been streaming just before his death, but to be honest, there's really not enough evidence for this. What's honestly more likely than not is that Too Mad might have either intentionally or unintentionally overdosed while playing Overwatch. According to his close friends and people who knew him, apparently it was well known that he was struggling with a drug addiction problem. Some of his close friends even reached out to Keemstar to supposedly explain this to him. Keemstar says his close friends told me years ago his drug use was the main cause of his horrible behavior. After that, he was accused of multiple sex crimes. I was again told he was on drugs. His weird behavior last year on Twitter, again, drugs. Now he's passed, again, drugs. Don't do drugs. When Too Mad passed away, and as someone who never really knew who Too Mad was, I was kind of surprised when I found out how ruthless the internet was towards him. I mean, for every one person showing sympathy on his death, there were thousands more making fun of him and mocking him for dying. I mean, look at his own subreddit, there's people actively mocking his death. It's kind of crazy to think about that from now on for the rest of internet's lifespan. Whenever someone's on Reddit and they want to learn more about him, if they end up going to his subreddit, that's the first thing that's going to greet them. A bunch of hate, a bunch of jokes making fun of his death. And it's just insane that that's what people are going to remember him by. That's what people are going to be introduced to him by. And it's just something so wild if you think about it too much. Already before, there were people who were actively hating on Too Mad for prior reasons that I'll get to later in this video. But his downfall and his death just ultimately added extra fuel to this fire. Of course, not everyone online was against Too Mad or were actively mocking him. There were a couple few who actively defended him from all this hate he was getting. Which is kind of weird because it's not even him anymore, it's his corpse, all the hate that his corpse was getting. Scooch says, I don't give a shit how you feel about Too Mad. If you're somebody using the overdose of a 23 year old as a punchline to farm impressions, you're a miserable f***ing scumbag. Boils my f***ing blood seeing how many terminally online people think it's something to laugh at. Crazy unhinged jokes at the expense of others are a massive part of the reason why we hated him. So why the fuck would you respond by doing the same exact shit he did? It was terrible then and it's terrible now. He's not the only 23 year old that overdosed this year and it will never be a fucking punchline. And this is where I think some defenders of Too Mad went out of line here. See some defenders were quick to point out a similarity between Too Mad's situation and another black content creator and streamer who passed away under similar circumstances, that being Etika. Remember the last black content creator that was showing clear signs of mental instability? And instead of advocating for his good health, everyone sent him clown emojis? Too Mad had issues, but man, rest in peace. As you may have expected, many people online didn't really appreciate this comparison, and there was a lot of backlash for those who did make this comparison. I think I know what they were trying to do. They were probably trying to garner sympathy by painting him in another light or making other people look at him at a different perspective, but the only problem is that it didn't really pan out that way. But unfortunately, that didn't really stop Etika's name from trending all over on Twitter. Online users were very quick in calling out the BS in this comparison between Etika and Too Mad. We're not 
Doing this, Etika was a kind, caring person who unfortunately never got the help he needed after he was pushed into a dark place. Too Mad was a pet abuser who attempted to kill people. There is no universe where they are comparable. Do not compare this man to Etika. Etika was a sweetheart who brightened everyone's lives and impacted the world in a genuinely positive way. Tumad was a racist abuser and who will live the rest of eternity in hell. People already comparing Tumad and Etika? Fucking disgusting. Etika was struggling with his mental health and did questionable shit because of that and tragically took his life. Tumad was a racist and tried to take a bunch of people with him to the grave while high. Despite both of them being black content creators, both struggling with mental illnesses at the time, and both taking their own lives in a tragic way, I think it's very telling on how dramatically different the internet responded to their deaths. It's almost like you reap what you sow. If you grow a community of fans who like you and adore you, you will be cherished when that day comes. And well, the same can be true, but the other way around. Like in Tumat's case, right? A rapist, pedophile, an abuser, by now if you hadn't heard who Two Man was, you probably by now have an idea on what kind of legacy this person left behind or why people hate him. Two Man's internet reputation was an odd one to say the least because he went from somebody who was making funny videos to a miserable person who enjoyed hurting other people. One pivotal moment that marked the turning point in Two Man's public image occurred last year on June when accusations surfaced on Twitter. User Goldie Bell detailed disturbing instances of being stalked and essayed by Tumad between the years of 2021 and 2022. Not only that, but Goldie Bill came with receipts. She would back up her claims with compelling evidence like a video where Tumad admitted to making inappropriate advances and issued an apology for his wrongdoings. Spam from Tumad after I blocked him for SAing me. He made six burner numbers after this to also spam me on, as well as Instagram accounts and Twitter accounts. If you want proof, I have all of it. Just ask. You can see him send texts actively at the end of this clip. In the midst of all this backlash, Tumad attempted to mitigate all this damage by portraying Goldie Bell as a vengeful ex-girlfriend, casting doubt on the credibility of her accusations. However, because he wouldn't prove any further details or present his side of the story, or any evidence for that matter, many people started to believe Goldie Bell's accounts over his. Adding to the controversy that he was already in, Tumad would also make a tasteless joke about the tragic death of Brianna Gay, a 16-year-old transgender girl who was brutally murdered in a transphobic attack the previous year. Tumad posted a picture of Brianna claiming she was his girlfriend. Although he later deleted the post, he would tell everyone that he didn't know who Brianna was and that he was honestly clueless. This response to the criticism he was getting instead made people more skeptic about the sincerity of his actions. Finally, the nail in the coffin that made everyone online despise Tumad was oddly in the days following Tumad's death. Further details were revealed when YouTuber James Swire or Jameski labeled Tumad as a racist and pedophile. James claimed that Tumad had attempted to murder him multiple times and had preyed on a vulnerable 13 year old in a mental hospital among other allegations. Other individuals like Rebel Ross or Ross O'Donovan also helped confirm these accusations. James provided detailed accounts of the danger he faced while Tumad was alive, including threats, a bullet hole in his office window, and involvement with the law enforcement. Seeing what kind of person Tumad was and knowing what kind of person Etika was, obviously millions online, including myself, did not really appreciate this comparison. Sure, they both were famous black content creators who were also struggling with mental illnesses and both both taking their lives in similar ways, that's about all they had in common. Where they obviously split apart was what kind of legacy they left behind. And this is pretty obvious when you look at how differently people reacted to Etika's death and Tumad's death. Now I'm not going to stand here and say that Etika was this perfect person and that because Tumad wasn't perfect, he's evil. The truth is nobody on this planet is perfect. You're not perfect, I'm not perfect, no one is. But without a fact, Etika was genuine. People loved how genuine and honest he was. He wasn't some fake persona. He would always bring in this bubbly, goofy, high energy w wherever he went. I mean, I remember watching him all the way back when I was younger. He was genuinely a funny, goofy person and that's why I liked him. But whenever he would make a mistake, mistake. He always made it very clear to anyone watching that he always wanted to improve. He would set some time on his stream to apologize for his wrongdoings and always made clear to his fans and everyone watching that everyone has room to grow. Mommy, I love you. I love you to death. Like God almighty. God, God knows I love my mom. Some people don't even have that. You know, I'm blessed. 
just to have someone like that. You know what I mean? And I love her so much. I love my mom to death, bro. I that's why I have to I have to be real with myself. I have to do what makes myself happy, bro. I have to do what makes myself feel proud of myself, man, in order to live the life that I truly want to live. I just want to say thank you all to you all for um for being there for me for being so dedicated to me, for being such amazing people. All of you guys in here, y'all are all fucking amazing. God almighty knows I will be making content that I'm proud of until that last breath leaves my body. This is nothing but the beginning for me, for you, for us. And I wanna move forward as boys, as Joy-Con boys. And that's why these comparisons are not it, man. Etika would never do the same things that Two Man did when they were both here, and the genuine proof is in how different each reaction to their deaths were. You don't get the same love and adoration from a community by acting like Too Mad. You get that by acting like Erika, and that's the truth. Finally, to end it off, was all of this hate warranted? Is all this hate towards Too Mad and his death really okay? Did he had it coming? Listen, you won't ever see me parading or celebrating someone's death, but you also won't see me complaining if someone else is doing that. Because at the end of the day, your legacy is your legacy. If Tumad acted the way he did, and this is the response that he got because of acting that way, then it's just the unfortunate reality. But I will say this, I do find it strange that whenever somebody passes away, people will always be like, oh, he, oh, he was an angel. Oh, he would never hurt a fly. Oh, he had good in him. When that really wasn't the case. I mean, having good inside of you is not enough. Talk to me when, talk to me when that good is outside, okay? Anyway, that's about all I had to say about this case. As always, my name is Poonzi and I'll catch you guys later. At this point, where is Boosie at? Boosie, please go live. I need a thousand dollars, Boosie, please. Please, darling.